Hi everyone, Bandana here. I hope you're all doing well. I hope you've had a great Friday and looking forward to the weekend. And your Friday night treat? Well, it is a preview of the 24th, 27th and the two new airport variants. I would like to remind everyone before we get into this that this is a work in progress build. It will be down at the bottom right hand corner for your convenience so you don't forget. Nothing here is final. There will be adjustments made. There are still some mistakes in terms of availability, in terms of pricing and other bits and pieces that still have to be shifted around. It is pretty close to final, I believe, and hopefully, assuming there are no major issues, they're leaning towards a release sometime next week. Obviously, they still need to do at least another revision to get all of the niggly bits and pieces through. I would like to state right now that I don't have a list of patch notes for you. Firstly, we're not allowed to release the patch notes because, as I say, they are never finalised at this point. Secondly, I don't have a list of everything that they've changed for this particular patch or this preview version. Just, I'm able to show you what the new units are for these divisions. The other thing I will mention is that at the same time that this video goes up, over on Twitch, I will be live streaming as will a wooden box, and yes, we'll be playing some games with each other, with some of the other strike team members, hopefully, be it team games or some 1v1s. Yes, I'll mostly be getting my ass handed to me by 1v1 pros. However, it should be a good laugh, so please do come along and watch us do that. So, let's go through the 24th first, no particular reason other than it was the first one I clicked on. There's going to be new units, there's going to be old units. What I will say about the 24th is, the toe is your friend. You can have some serious toe spam with this division. But, let's get into it. Logistics, pretty similar to what you usually get. We're always used to seeing the M35 supply. You know I really like that, I'm going to stick it in this deck. Now this is the new bad boy, the M548A2 Armoured Supply Vehicle. Has a little space for a gun on top, but it doesn't get one. This thing has 1,250 supply. You get a card of four, that means you get 5,000 supply in total. Obviously, plenty of availability there in terms of supply. It actually works out exactly the same as the M35. That is 10 times 500, so that's 5,000, and that is 4 times 1 to 50, which makes 5,000 as well. You also have access to the UH-1H supply, which is also available to the Berlin Command. This comes in at slightly less supply overall, so you're better off taking the other vehicle if you're going to take three of them. Then you have access to the UH-1A Command Chopper. I'm wondering if there will be a new skin for this because at the moment it just uses the same old skin that was already in the game and i know they are still working on some skins for this division next up you have the usual command little jeep the mutt cp then we've got the m577 cpc command vehicle again this has not got a new skin yet i think it might get one i'm pretty sure that is the third armor division logo on the side there but I think it will probably be getting a new look, but don't quote me on that. Then we have the M2A1 Bradley Command. No big changes there. We're used to this. What you will note is that some of the naming has been changed on the Bradleys. It's not that the weapons or anything or the stats have been changed. It's just that they have renamed them to better fit what each division would have had. And obviously you get your usual field supply depot. Let's move on to the infantry. This is where some of the really interesting stuff is. So we have the military police leader, an 11-man squad with M16s and M14s. Pretty big squad. They get the security trait. And they get military police trait. They come as veteran. You only get two of them, but they're a pretty big squad. They can take a bit of punishment. Certainly good for holding a point. Please note, they don't have any anti-tank. You have the MP Patrol. These are available in a few different squads, obviously. 15 points. 12 per card. I mean, they're pretty cheap. There's five of them. I think they're good cannon fodder, considering they're veteran again. And they have the military police trait, which will come in handy for anything that has reservist, because it will remove that trait. Then we've got the military police patrol M67. Obviously, the M67 recoilless rifle you'll be familiar with by now. Not as good as it once was, been nerfed to high heaven and back, but uh, still not terrible. It can still hit both infantry and vehicles, so it still has its uses. 
Then we have the really, really beefy military police squad. 10-man squad, 40 points. Comes with the M16, the M14, and the M60 times 2 Nice beefy squad. These are decent line infantry, to be honest. They don't have any anti-tank again, remember? So please keep that in mind. You will need infantry with anti-tank capability alongside them. But they are quite potent. Next up, you get your usual array of machine guns. We've got the... National Guard Machine Gun. Now, obviously, this comes as untrained and with the reservist trait. So, it's slightly cheaper, but you're taking it at, you know, quite a reduced aiming time, for example. That's 2 seconds, that's 2.4 seconds. So, how much difference will it make in the long run? I'm not sure, but realistically, the 7.62s aren't great right now, so we're not going to take that anyway. Moving on, the... 12.7mm, same as you get in other divisions, nothing special there. Then we get the National Guard Fire Team Leader. This is a six-man squad. It has three availability per card. The M16, the M14, and it also comes with a law. And it can come in the NG M2 Bradley IFV. Pretty much a standard M2 Bradley with an ITO. An ITO isn't bad here. Remember that. These guys come as trained as well, so they don't have quite as much of a malice as the guys that are untrained do. They do have the reservist trait, however. But, you know, Ito, not bad. Not bad at all. Then you've got the NG Fireteam Law. National Guard Fireteam Law. Again, they have that reservist trait, and these guys come untrained. So bear in mind, they take a lot of punishment to accuracy to rate of fire, to aiming time. Basically, they're not great, but they can come in the cheaper M2 Bradley with, again, those eye toes. And one of the things about this deck is you can really bring a lot of toes. There are a lot of toe launchers here. You could be a real nuisance with them. And realistically, it doesn't have to be toe twos because the toe ones can be quite annoying as well. Then you've got the NG Fireteam Dragon. They only have the standard Dragon, not the Dragon 2. They come with the M60 and the M16. Again, six-man squad, and they can come in the Bradley once more. So these are very similar squads. The only big difference is the Law and the Dragon. Would I take them? I'm not sure I would at the moment. I feel like they're getting a lot of penalty for the fact they are untrained at the moment. Whether there's going to be adjustments to all this stuff going forward i think there might be because i just don't see the major reason you would take them right now i mean they're not really any cheaper i mean they're a little bit cheaper than bringing the normal squads but i think i'd rather bring the normal squads namely the fire team law which obviously as you know is already in the game in a few divisions it's a decent squad then you've got the Fireteam AT4, which is a very good squad. And here you can bring them, obviously, in the Bradley. This is the M2A1 Bradley as well. So it does have the Toe 2. And you can also have the Fireteam Dragon with the Dragon 2. And you also have access to the Engineer's Dragon, if you so wish. Not a bad squad. Ten men. It's in a few different divisions. You get the Engineer's Flash, the Standard Engineer's, Engineer's Leader. You get an NG Toe. Now, this is a Toe, not an I Toe. So this is like the lowest of the low. I just don't see why I would take that. It only has 16 pen. It's not happening. Ito, however, good choice here, as is the Tor 2. I generally end up taking the Ito because you get so few of the Tor 2. I'd rather take some Tor 2 with these Bradleys. You also get access to the arrow rifles coming in Huey, which again just has that same skin at the moment, but I imagine at some point we could see that skin being changed for this division but I'm not 100% sure. So there you go. New stuff, basically military police stuff at the top here. The military police leader, military police larger squad. All of the National Guard stuff is all new as well. Some of it not convinced worth taking at the moment. Certainly, I'd rather take the Fireteam AT4 and the Fireteam Dragons here personally. Artillery-wise... Nothing too exciting here, nothing that's a big change. You get the NG National Guard M109A2. Now, the big thing here is its rate of fire and its aiming time. Please note that when I compare them. Rate of fire goes down to 3 from 4, and aiming time goes to 31 seconds from 26. 
I still wouldn't touch the National Guard's howitzer. I don't think three of them are worth it, personally. So I'd probably avoid that. I think the standard M109 is fine here. Over in the tank tab, what do we get? Well, we get the National Guard Ito on a little Jeep. This is pretty good. Pricing isn't too bad at 50 points. You get 12 of them. And this is what I'm saying. This division can really have a lot of toes. Remember, this has good stealth, so it hides pretty well. It does have the reservist trait. Realistically, that's not as of much concern. Accuracy is a bit lower, obviously. But, you know, if you're just wanting to spam toes, the availability is there. You also have access to the M901A3 ITV with the TOW 2 and the M901 ITV with the ITO. Get the CEV, get the M1 Abrams command tank, get the National Guard M1 Abrams. Now, again, this thing comes untrained, so it takes a lot of penalty to firing and everything. Let's just pin that. I mean, these are pretty much the same tank, right? One's just a command tank, but in terms of the stats, rate of fire drops to 8 from 9, accuracy drops quite considerably, and that isn't fixed by removing the reservist trait with the military police, so not convinced by that at the moment, but look at this. Look at how many of these bad boys we can take. Three cards. We can rank them up. Look at that. Three M1IPs. We can take two cards of the M1IP Abrams Command Tank. That's already quite a lot of tanks. Stick the Abrams Command Tanks in there. That's covering us for a lot of commands in this deck as well. Lots of points to spare. And got a couple of cards left as well if you wish to fill them up, but there's plenty of tanks in this deck. Over on the Recon tab, we have various scouts. We have the National Guard Scouts, which come with the M14 Sniper and the standard M14. And we have the standard scouts. In the grand scheme of things, I'll probably take the standard scouts here still. I just think they're a better squad overall and again they don't have the issue of coming in as untrained experienced poor get sniper you get the m981 fist v get the m150 in the usual array of helicopters and you get the m3a1 bradley so only real change here is obviously the national guard scouts Anti-air, you do get the NG Stinger. What I need to point out here is that what I didn't realize is this is the Stinger Basic. I'm going to pin that. Let's compare them. You get the Stinger Post with the standard Stinger, but you get the Stinger Basic on the other side. Look at the difference here. The accuracy is a massive drop on the National Guard Stinger. And you have the fact that they are already taking a penalty to that as well because they come in untrained. So, not convinced I would take them even for 10 points less. I think that's uh, not really worth it. Much rather take the standard Stinger here. You get access to the Pivad, you get access to the OH-58C, and you get access to the Chaparral. You get a couple of cards of those as well. I'd probably be sticking one or two cards of those in as well as the Stinger and the Pivads. Helicopters, get the Cobra, and you get the Tow Cobra, and you do get the National Guard Apache, one card of two, it's still a good chopper, even coming in untrained, I mean it's a scary chopper, please note it does have the reservist trait as well though, so it will panic easily, but uh, it's still scary to see coming at you, the air tab, Get the F4F Phantom, the HE Bomber, and the Napalm. Get the Weasel Seed. Very familiar. Get the 111F. The F15C Eagle. Beautiful jet. And then you get this bad boy. Look at this. The F15E Strike Eagle. Four. GBU-10, laser-guided bombs, Vulcan cannon, AIM-9s times 4, exceptional agility, good air optics, 
and 40% ECM. The same 40% that you get with the F-15C. This is a proper Strike Eagle. This just mashes stuff. And it is very hard to take down. It is a beautiful jet. I'm waiting for this to come out of early access in DCS once it's got everything added to it. And I want to buy it. I just want to make sure they finish it first. But, uh, yeah, really love this jet. So many weapon mounts that aren't used here. It's got four bombs on it. It can actually carry up to seven of these things. Plus the AIM-9s. And, and it can take some more fuel tanks as well. Not just its form-fitting fuel tanks there. Let's actually build the deck, shall we? So, we'll take the M35 Supply. We'll take one of these on the basis that we won't build this as a 1v1 deck. We're just going as a team deck for now. And we'll take the Mutt Command Vehicle. Infantry, we are... Ooh, what do we take here? I think we take one of... Do we take one of these commands? Do we need the commands when we've got so many tank commands? Probably not. Let's take the military police. Let's take an Ito. An Ito is our long range. We'll take the M67 for a bit of harassment. We will unpin that. We will take Fireteam Dragons. We won't take them in the Bradley. Because they're the more expensive squad. And that gives us some more long range. We're going to take the AT4s, and we will take them in a Bradley. They're a good squad. Makes them a little bit expensive. We'll take the Fireteam Law as well. Again, I'm not ranking these guys up, just because I want plenty of infantry available. We're going to take the Flash. We'll probably take the Aero Rifles, because they're a good squad, just to have. And I'm tempted to stick the Engineers Dragons in there, but the Machine Gun Squads are doing pretty good at the moment. In terms of the ones with multiple machine guns. Do we take those as well? I think we take two cards of those. They come in fairly cheap. They've got the long range dragon. We got the military police. For a bit of fire support. We've got the fire team. Fire team law. I'd be tempted to stick the MP patrol in there. For some cannon fodder at the end as well. Let's do that. I mean there's. They're all cheap cards. The last one's only two points. And we've only spent 24. I think that's pretty good. Artillery. We will take the M106 A2 mortar. We will take the M109 A2s. And we'll stick an MLRS in there for the time being. I may remove that. In tank tab, I'm not going to change anything here. I'm happy with the three sets of Abrams there. Ranked up to that level. We've got the tanks here as well. That's six commands. So we've got nine commands in this deck. That is more than enough, right? That should be keeping us very happy for the moment. I'd be tempted to stick the Ito in here as well. I don't think that's a bad option. Recon, we go for scouts, I think, in the standard little Jeep. Then I would like to take the Bradley, because that's always good. And I would like to take the Kiowa for its exceptional recon. Kiowa Warrior is just a little bit pricey. I think that's a better option here. Anti-air, we're going to take a Stinger. We're going to take a Chaparral. We're going to take the Pivads. And I'd be very tempted to stick another Chaparral in there, but we'll come back. Helicopters, we're definitely taking the Apaches. We're going to take at least one Cobra. So you get two of those per card. Let's move on to air and then come back. So here we're going to take the Eagle. We're going to take the Strike Eagle. I'm, I'm going to take both Strike Eagles. They're expensive, but they come as elite. They're not going to be easily scared off. I think we have to take the seed. And I think we take the phantom as well. And that leaves us two points to play with. So we've got plenty of anti-air for air control. We've got the strike eagle. We don't need any of the bombers with those strike eagles. They are going to annihilate stuff. And then we've got the seed to deal with any... Radar AA. Where can we spend those last two points? Ooh. Helicopters. Cobras. Nice. 50 of 50. Supply, supply. Command. Ito. 
M67, Dragons, Dragons Military Police, Fireteam 84, Fireteam Law, Flash, Air Rifles, MP Patrol for some cannon fodder, Artillery, I think that's a nice spread of artillery, Mortars, M1 and 9s and MRLS, Tanks, the M1IPs, the M1IP Commands and the M1 Abrams Commands. This is where you can start using those commands to push as well, because you've got enough of them there to use them as actual tanks. Recon, I think there's enough there. That's 18 recon units there. You've got six Bradleys and you've got some Cures. And yeah, I think that's enough. You, the Pivads I'm umming and ahhing over, it's purely because they're so good against choppers right now, but you could potentially switch that out for some more Chaparrales. Helicopters, very happy with that. Very happy. Aircraft, yeah. We don't need any of the other bombers here. We have the Strike Eagles. These things are going to absolutely smash stuff. Just keep them alive and they will be devastating. Super. That's the 24th. Let's move on to the 27th, guys. Welcome back to the 27th. So, brand new deck. Lots of nice new toys. We'll have a look through them all. Again, work in progress build. There are a few mistakes on the cards here. Some of which I know are going to be changed because I've also brought them to Eugen's attention. So there's going to be a few adjustments, but nothing major, I don't think, at this stage. I say this, and then next week when it's actually released and they've completely changed it all, I'll look like a fool. But never mind. So what have we got with the 27th? Well, we've got a pretty standard outlay here. We've got the MTLBs, we've got the Urals, we've got the BMP2K, which is new. This is especially for the 27th. Nothing too exciting, really, other than it's a new command. Got the RKHM. Nothing special there. You've seen it before. We've got the BTR-80K. This is special, and again, for the 27th. Moving on to the infantry. So, what's new here? Well, Commander Jura is not new. You've seen that before. We've got the PKM and the NSV 12.7mm and the Palmia 30mm. Now... Interestingly, all of these are 27th only. Even though technically they're available in multiple decks, and that's because of the camo. You may remember from the dev blog last week that uh, these guys have a new camo set. So all of their units with this new camo set technically won't look like they're available to anything else even though that some of them technically are an example of that would obviously be the motor stralki which have the new camo but you know motor stralki metis are available in other divisions we'll we'll have a look at these in a second back to where we were so you get again this squad these guys once again not new but have the new camo, so therefore are only available in this division. Motorsharky Commander, you get the BTR-80, you get the BMP-1P, and you get the BMP-2. Then we have these bad boys, the Motorsharky RPG-27. Look at this. 500 meter range, 21 penetration. These guys are going to mince vehicles. Absolutely mince vehicles and tanks at close range. You're going to want to sneak up on people in forests and in towns with these bad boys. Get the choice of the BMP 1P, BMP 2, BMP 2D, which has slightly more side armor, and then the BMP 2AG. Now, this thing, I think, is going to be fantastic with this squad. You've got a squad that is very effective against vehicles. You've got the addition of a 30mm and the Conkers. And you've got them having some great fire support from the AGS 1730mm grenade launcher. This thing is going to be really effective against infantry in supporting these forces. I think that's going to be a really good matchup there. You can have four cards of those. And then you get the Motor Stralky RPG-26. Slightly better range. Uh, reduced penetration to 16, but still not a bad squad at all. These guys only come in the Gaz or the BTR-80. Obviously, reduced vehicle options. Interestingly, 
they're only available there but the btr obviously doesn't have new camo so it is actually available to other divisions as well uh, the motostrelki again can come in the btr 80 bmp 1p bmp 2 bmp 2d and the bmp 2ag obviously the 2d and the 2ag only available to the 27th whereas the bmp 2 and 1p available to other divisions as well these guys i don't think you need to take them in the expensive one but you know for five points more it's not bad over here you're just getting the machine gun and these are the same price just to point that out the difference here is that has more side armor but can't go over water that can go over water so they're the same price you lose the over water traversal and gain the armor on that one and it remains the same price sapri commander sapri and sapri rpo standard squads again just with that camo change on the cheeky three pkms again standard squad but these guys can come in that range of bmp2s as well then you got the conkers and then finally the conkers m this is the new toy the upgraded conkers 23 penetration 55 percent accuracy basically along the lines of the milan 2 i'd think of it like that a bit like a milan 2 as opposed to a toe 2 nowhere near as good as a toe 2 but uh decent range less availability but i think it's not a bad squad at all over in the artillery tab this is where we get some new stuff as well so you get standard 120 millimeter mortars we get the nona svk which has now a mounted machine gun on top nona here with 20 penetration obviously on its heat rounds very fast vehicle can take two cards of these if you so wish it depends how you use them of course but there are mortar and a heat gun with a reasonable range to be honest with that penetration obviously penetration doesn't increase with distance because it's not kinetic it is a heat gun but it's still pretty good i could see those being quite nasty at times get a d30 120 millimeter 122 millimeter specifically sorry i never really think much of these they're all right but uh nothing special then we got these guys the Gaiatsintz B I have no idea how to pronounce that guys it's a big gun with two wheels I think that's all we need to say look at the size of that thing that is a big gun 152 millimeter decent range decent damage that is a huge gun huge standard artillery pieces and then this special upgraded one so this is the new bad boy this is the new guided indirect weapon so this is a quote-unquote laser guided round that it fires so this thing if you have recon covering an area aka your recon has its vision over an area you know that white circle when you select your artillery then it will be pinpoint accurate it does not miss this thing kills stuff it does not miss as long as your recon can see it will not miss it is genuinely devastating hence its price and hence why you want to get one per card i will note that currently there is a bit of a bug here that uh, you can select it to be up vetted or not that will be fixed that is one of the things i was talking about with the cards that needs to be adjusted you also have access to the bm 21 grad nothing special there just your standard this is the big toy really that is genuinely genuinely devastating if you have recon in the right place next up your tank tab the new toy here is the sprut b okay so 125 millimeter cannon in real life it has a little motor on it so it can drive itself forward that doesn't really have an effect in the game i don't think uh 23 penetration is a lot of penetration bear in mind that's 23 penetration 
at 1925 meters this will be absolutely devastating if you catch someone in a crossfire you do not want this thing firing at its maximum range you want it to catch stuff that gets too close and kill it in one hit basically this thing will do a lot of damage this is like you put it at either side of a point and wait for the enemy to assault in the middle and then catch them out by firing at them from both sides and you will kill tanks very quickly that is that is going to be really strong in the game but you have to use it well because if you give its position away and you show it off too early it's going to get artillery to smithereens but if you catch people out that will be devastating get a brdm2 conquers m this is another new unit technically just purely because it's got the conquers m 23 pen not bad at all long range another option for your arsenal and your tanks t80 bvs i think the tank options here is very generous rank them up take all four cards you have eight t80 bvs there you go stick in the t80 bv case as well okay i'd probably drop one of the t80 bvs and i'd take the sprut i think the sprut is too good to give up i think that's going to come in very handy for catching people out setting up little traps and stuff obviously that'll depend on map to map how effective that is but i think that could be very strong you still got six of these and another four of those so you got 10 decent tanks i think there's enough there Recon, plenty of options here. Spetsvazvedka over here that can come in the MI-8T. Makes them quite expensive, but as you know, choppers are pretty good right now. Got the Mott Razvedka, we've got the Razvedka Sapri, and we've got the standard Razvedka. Mott Razvedka obviously can come in the Raz BMP2, which is only available to the 27th. BRM1 and the MI24K, as ever, a fantastic choice for early game harassment. Anti air, you get the Iglers ZU23s, which are available elsewhere, but uh, obviously have the new camo. The Strella 10M3, this is one of the new toys. A little bit different. Good accuracy, 6 penetration, or 6 HE damage I should say, it's not penetration, what am I on about? Decent range against helicopters, good unit there, a little bit pricey, but a good unit. Then you get the Tor, missiles are in the top, new animation for this, firing the missiles out of the top there. You're sure you will see us using this on stream tonight, so do tune in for that, you can see it's new animation. Good range against helicopters and aircraft. 7 HE. Reasonably good accuracy there. 65%. Obviously, bear in mind it is radar. And obviously, you have the Tunguska as well. Which is no slouch. Helicopters. Nothing new or special here. We get the MI-24AA. We get the MI-24V anti-tank and the MI-24V rocket. Good choppers. And then in aircraft, we get the SU-17 M4 rocket, the AT variant as well, only available to the 27th. The MiG-23 AA-2, only available to the 27th, with the two R-24MR missiles. The MiG-27 MHE. The MiG-27 M Napalm. The MiG-29 AA-2 available to the 27th and the 35th. And then the new toy. The SU-25T or as they're calling it here the T-8M. Another one of my favourites from uh, DCS. It's got its Vicar missiles. It fires two missiles at a time at one target. They are not fire and forget so you have to stay guided on the target as they go in so you can't divert off you have to follow them in also has a couple of anti-air missiles as well and the typical 
strong 30mm cannon, and it's typically slow speed, so still pretty effective against helicopters. Okay, let's knock this division together, shall we? Let's build this deck. So, logistics, we're going to take the Ural and probably an MTLB just for the extra armor at the front there. We're going to take the BTR 80K because of the speed more than anything else. We might take some more Urals here, but we'll come back. Infantry, we're going to take the Conkers M because we should probably try it out. We're going to take the Sapri RPO as our standard, and we're going to take these guys because I think they're always very good as a squad. That said, it's more for their range that I like them at the 750, so I think we'll still stick them in. Then we're going to go for these guys with the RPG-27. We're going to take some in the BMP-2AG. We're going to stick two cards of those in, I think. Yeah, a bit pricey, but good squads. These guys, I don't know. 40 points versus 45. Ah, the problem is these guys can't come in anything that can be sold. They only come in the BMPs. So the reason to take these would be to bring them in a gas, really. Most Jockey Metis would definitely bring them in. They can come in in the BTR to keep the price down. And also for speed. Because they're pretty good at getting up front and covering towns and stuff. Hmm. Choices, choices. I think we take these guys because we can bring them in a bit cheaper. I mean, that's 60 points and they've still got a decent anti-tank. I'm tempted to take these guys for the fact they have so many machine guns and those squads are performing pretty well right now. And we can just bring them in a BTR, which again keeps them reasonably cheap. Just gives us some extra infantry. And then, do we take some command here? How many commands do we have? Two... Yeah, I think we take some commands. So, only two availability on both of them. Four people, four people. These guys are better, aren't they? They've got the 15 pen. I think we take those and we just take them in a USZ for speed. There we go. Let's move them all the way to the top so we know where they are and don't click them by mistake. Sapri RPO, our close range stuff right at the bottom. We can split those guys up. Uh, there we go. I'm almost tempted to take these guys out and take some more Motostrelki RPG-27s, but it would make them very expensive, whereas these guys are pretty cheap. Oh, that's challenging. I think we stick with these. The only thing I'm missing here is the 30 mil grenade launcher, but I think we can live without it. Happy enough, let's move on. In this tab, we're going to take the Nona's. I'm going to take both the owners, and I'm going to take those things because they do not miss. As long as you can see, they do not miss. They are very expensive, though. Debating in the back of my mind whether it's t worth taking a stack of those instead. Let's do that. I'll go with that for now. If these guys perform well, we'll keep them. But obviously, we definitely want at least one of the guided ones in. Because they're just going to do so much damage. Tanks, very happy with that. Not going to change that. Three T-80 BVs, the two commands, tank sets, and the Sprut. Recon. MI-24K goes in. We're going to take the standard Razvedka in the little Recon Jeep. And then I'm tempted to take the Spets Razvedka in the Rocket Chopper. It makes them very expensive. But uh, they do get the ground surveillance radar and everything. So I think they will be quite nasty. They can get the front line quickly. They have the advantage of rocket attack. Yeah, go with that. Igla. Tor. Tor is expensive. I want the Strella in my deck. I know not everybody will want that. Although... I can turn the guns off on that and just use the missiles. It is expensive, though. But it has better range, doesn't it? Tunguska. And we might just turn the guns off on that. 
and use the missiles. And then I don't have to babysit it. And then, tempted by the ZU for its anti-chopper capability, and it's nice and cheap. Anything to scare choppers away at the moment. It's between that and the Strella. I think that for how cheap it is. We'll give it a go. Helicopters. I'm going to get one AA chopper. We're going to take that, and I'm going to take both of those. Ouch. I'm at 48 or 50. That's not good. That's not good at all. <laughs> Aircraft. We're taking that. We're taking that. And we're going to take the MiG-23s, aren't we? Bear in mind, we don't have any seed availability here, so you got to be relying on your aircraft to control the skies on your side of the map. you got to be careful with these units, or they're going to get shot down. As the MiG-29 only has 20% ECM, as does the MiG-23. So you have no way of taking out radar AA here. Just keep that in mind. Otherwise... I think you get a lot in this deck. I think you get some really nice toys. I'm kind of sad I'm not taking the other chopper here. You're limited a bit in the choppers. Unless you drop something somewhere else. But I think that's what we go with. Okay. 27th. Ural MTLB BTR-80. Infantry. Motostrokey Commander. Because we need more commanders in this deck, especially if we're going to do 1v1 with it. Uh, Conquers M, Motostrock in Metis, RPG 27, RPG 27 in the BMP 2AG. The Podrazirki, which I'm pronouncing wrong, I apologize. Uh, <laughs> in the Gaz, Motostrock RPG 26 in the Gaz. Pulmachiki in the BTR 80 and the Sapri RPO. Lots of nice infantry there. Nona, Nona. Akatasia, and that's a special one, remember, with the guided artillery shells. And then this toy, just to give it a go. Tanks, 6080 BVs, 4080 BVKs, and the Sprut. Recon, MI24K, Razvedka, and Spet Razvedka. Anti-air, Igla, Tor, Tunguska, ZU-23. MI-24AA and MI-24V rocket. And then in aircraft, the MiG-29, the MiG-23 and the T-8M or the SU-25T, if you prefer to give it its proper name. Okay, guys. Thank you very much for anyone who has joined me to take a look at the two new divisions. We've gone through them. We've built a deck for each. I'm going to take a quick look at the two new airport maps from this point forward. If you're staying around for that, enjoy. If not, thank you for joining me. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. And make sure you come and join us over on the live streams. Welcome to Airport Duel. So, big change here. Obviously, the sides of the map have been cut off. Repositioning of where you come in on the map. And all of the little points have been made smaller here. So, each side has sort of a point to themselves. Anna and Paul, respectively. And then all across the middle, there's four points, which are going to be fought over. I expect Emma, Elena, and Fedor to be the main fighting points. Boris feels a little bit out the way, so I'm curious how that turns out. Unfortunately, due to how the map is positioned and everything, you kind of miss out on that city area there, or town area, and this one here, because they'd simply be too close to the enemy spawn. But uh, I think there's going to be a lot of good fights, especially over these three here. Fedor, Elena, and Emma. I think there's going to be a lot of good fighting over these points. And obviously controlling this little area here will be important to stop the enemy pushing through and cutting you off. Very nice. There is also a 10v10 version, which we'll have a quick look at as well. So the 10v10 version is identical to the standard version, other than... Apologies, I left an AI in. Uh, other than the expansion of the deployment zone. So the deployment zones are bigger, but the actual points and everything are the same as the standard version. The size of the map's the same. Nothing else has changed, basically. They've just enlarged the deployment zones to account for the 10 players on each side. But otherwise, same positioning. I think it'll be a lot of fun in 10v10. I know a lot of people are asking for it. 
Um, obviously, it's been quite a lot of fun playing it in team games, 3v3s. So I think it'll be a good one in 10v10 as well. Probably very hectic, but I think it'll be a lot of fun. Okay, that's the new divisions looked at, and that is the new maps looked at. Do come along to the stream. I'm sure there's some other bits and pieces we can show off there, and obviously you can see the divisions in action. Thanks very much for watching, everyone. Please do like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you all soon for some more Warno.